I am fully stuck onto the chassis. Holy, welcome back to a new year for Days Off Adventures, guys. Welcome back. I'm super stoked to have you here with me. We have got some, uh, we've got a brand new year. Oh, have I got the biggest, tastiest secret I've been keeping from you guys for a very, very long time. This is a massive project. It's a massive way that this channel is going to take, uh, a turn this channel is going to take, and I'm glad to share it with you guys. So here it is. The big secret that I've been keeping from everyone. So, if you head to Mackay Council website, on their website, there will be 101 things to do in Mackay. Guess what your boy's gonna do? Every single one of them. I'm gonna do every single one of them on that website and more, and I'm gonna bring it to you. So I'm gonna give you information about the places to go, things to do in Mackay. This is the biggest project I've ever done and I'm super, super stoked to bring it to you guys. So today we're kicking it off. We're kicking it off this year. Oh mate, look at this. Blue skies, white sand, blue beach, no wind. Just the tiniest little breeze of wind. I am super stoked. Big girl in the background. Ugh. Guys, I'm at Cape Palmerston. Cape Palmerston is probably the speckiest spot in Mackay. Great for camping, a little bit of full driving. Um, now, campsites, I will give you this information. Campsites, for me tonight, is seven bucks for me in the car. That's it. So I think for a family, uh, it's about 28 bucks for a full family of four and one car. I think it's a little bit extra for camper trailers, but I'll leave a link to, Mackay, uh, to Queensland Parks in the description below, as well as Mackay Council, um, Mackay Tourism, all the websites, so you can get all this information properly in the link below. So today we're going to explore Cape Palmerston. I always come here and I haven't come here in a fair while because I've been busy doing other stuff but I'm actually glad to come back. It's so beautiful this place. This place is uh, definitely one of those places that is underrated and um, I actually have to kind of beat the tide. I'm having a bit of drama with my drone at the moment which I'm pretty annoyed about. DJI fix your gear mate. I'm over it. So we're going to punch up the beach. Um, head up to Windmill Bay and try and get to the lookout and hopefully do some fishing on high tide. So let's jump in the car, let's go. So if you haven't headed up to Cape Palmerston before guys, uh, very, very tidal. So if you think you can get up here in high tide, uh, you can't, you can't. I'm actually racing the clock right now to uh, get to a certain point. Hopefully I can get to it or else I'll have to wait out the tide. Um, it was just, that's just the time of day I had to get here. Uh, but definitely check the tides before you come here. Um, I should be able to get full, pretty close up the beach. There is an inland track, but unless you want to scratch up your new car, it's covered in lantana, and uh, there's a lot of lot of uh, big bog holes there, and um, I've actually been stuck there once before. So definitely the best drive is up the beach. Um, definitely drop your tire pressures if you're unexperienced. Uh, always drop your tire pressures on the beach. It just helps you give you a bigger footprint in the sand to give you more control, give you better traction in the in the sand. So we're driving along the beach right now, and yeah, she's she's still a bit uh, bit compacted the sand, which is pretty good. But yeah, we definitely have to race this tide, and I'm hoping to get around this point. And then once we get up this point, we can head up inland. And there's a track inland that you can hit, but I didn't want to hit the first inland track yet yeah, because it's just it's not a good site so there's camping all along the beach um, there's heaps of campsites as you drive in uh, along the beach uh, you'll see them all along the beach windmill bay is probably my first destination of campsites that i'm going to try and look at today uh, i do want to try and do a bit of fishing i've got a bit of squid there and a few lures uh, bluey country around here as i've been told by the locals so if you do like to fish and you've got a boat, definitely uh, drop it in on the beach here. I wouldn't suggest a massive boat, uh, maybe a tinny. But um, yeah, it's definitely a beautiful place and definitely have to watch the tides when you're coming in here, guys. Um, they can get, the, we're actually at a very high tide today, actually. So I'm hopefully just gonna go as far as I can and hopefully I can get to this other inland track and um, 
Yeah, and then, then I should be right. It, it won't matter. The tides won't matter to where I'm going. You can hit inland tracks from there. I just don't want to hit that first inland track because it's, yeah, it's boggy as hell and covered in lantana. I seen it on the way in and, yeah, I would have just scratched up my car the, in the first five meters. So it's not something I want to do and I'm sure you guys don't want to do it either. So as you can see, the tide is actually racing right now. I'm on the sand now and it seems to be pretty dry, which informs me that where I'm driving, it, the high tide mark hasn't gone any higher than where I'm driving, so it should be all right. And, as, as, and the reason why we do this, guys, is uh, salt water's no good for the car. Definitely no good for the car. So I was hoping to get my drone up, which I'm pretty devil about, but I don't think I'm gonna have a chance to, mainly because I'm racing the tide, as I've said. And DJI, uh, <laughs> They just don't want to uh, improve their app for the Mavic 2, which I'm absolutely annoyed about. All right, guys, I'm going to punch it. So we definitely made it. Now, uh, if you want to head to Windmill Bay, I will say this. As you get onto the beach from the main road of, I think it's called uh, Cape Palmerston Road. Uh, if you want to head down to where I am, so you get on the beach and you turn left and you just keep following that beach. You'll go around uh, a big corner and you'll come into a little bay. And then right at the end, there'll be a bunch of mangroves there, and you'll, be, you'll see the track come straight in. Now, I'm at a bit of a fork in the road here, so from memory, that way heads out to a point, which you can go to. I think we used to hit that a lot in the Forbies, but we're going to go straight. We're heading to Windmill Bay. That I'm pretty sure that way takes you out to the beach. And so if you're coming in through the track here, right will take you to another beach, and you go straight ahead to go to Windmill Bay, and that's where we're headed now. So again, guys, what I'm doing this year is 101 things to do in Mackay. I'm going to hit every track, every campsite, uh, try and do a lot of family fun events that I can show you guys, give you as much information as possible. So hence why I'm talking a lot. <laughs> but um, I just want to do this mainly because a lot of people ask me a lot of questions about what there is to do in Mackay and they want to know more information about where I'm going. So this is what I'm doing guys. I'm going to try and do as many as I can and give you as much information as I can so you can get out there on the track. So if you're going to find this this content valuable, please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and leave a lovely comment to me guys and because that's going to make my that's going to make my channel grow and that's pretty much what I want to do. I just want to help you guys get out there and have a bit of fun with your family or by yourself or with your mates or with your missus and just get out there and hit the tracks guys and just get lost in this beautiful country we have Australia and this beautiful town in Mackay so again that's what I'm doing look at the big girl in the back loves it loves it cruised along the beach very very nicely I was in low range there oh actually let me give you a bit of a tip for driving on the beach especially here stay at 60 60 is probably the highest speed you want to do on the beach any more than that man you hit a you hit a soft patch you could easily roll your car it's happened so many times you see it on the news people drive stupid on the beach i'm going to promote safe driving for everyone on the beach and for yourself and your family so 60 is the highest if you're not confident on driving on the beach go slower but a good tip is keep the momentum up if you need to stop uh, if you're in the higher part of the beach just try and stay as close as you can to the water but not in the water <laughs> let's just say that halfway in between the soft sand and the water that's where you want to go because the the overnight tide would have compacted that sand enough for you to drive on so that's that's the safe way to drive stay at 60 if you don't feel as confident maybe drop yourself down to 50 but just keep that momentum and don't stop because as soon as you stop you could en end up in a world of hurt oh actually if you do stop and get stuck, my car's still running, sorry. Get yourself some max tracks. I've got some on the top of the roof rack there. I usually carry four. Um, I just haven't figured out a mounting system yet, but I'll get there, I'll get there. But I just carry two just in case. Also, carry some recovery gear, because if you do get stuck and someone drives past, I'll be able to help you out. So, let's keep punching on, because I want to get to the campsite and I want to do some fishing. Let's go. tell you what it's a hard life it's definitely a hard life windmill bay and that's why you have the, that's why you pay the money for you know 
these sort of campsites because they give you facilities like a long drop but oh <laughs> guys that beach is just there look at this Stayed in terrible places, but <laughs> this is not one of them. Campground here is very flat too, so definitely if you've got a rooftop tent, which I do, um, great place to park up, but even if you've got a swag or whatever, beautiful place to roll your swag. What else do you guys need to know? If I've missed anything, or you want to know more information, just drop a comment and I'll answer as quick as I can with the right information for you guys. But, um, Windmill Bay. <laughs> what an absolute gem. What an absolute gem. All right, guys, we're gonna head to this uh, lookout top. I'm hoping that I've got enough reception now so I can fly my drone and um, get you some awesome pics. So I've actually twisted my own arm and I think I might uh, pull up for lunch here. <laughs> I was gonna go, gonna go uh, check out this lookout, but it's too goddamn gorgeous. I just need to just take it in and uh, I don't know yet. This does look like a good spot, but there's so much more to explore in Cape Palmerston, and we're going to do that. But, with views like this, <laughs> wow. So, I uh, got lost, <laughs> but I went, end up going into uh, the creek there, uh, Cape Creek, I think it's called. Anyway, it was completely packed, there was heaps of people. I think I got a little drone shot there, finally got the drone working, but where I'm at right now is at the lookout. <laughs> Holy, this place is absolutely specky. I'm right on the point here. Oh, you couldn't ask for better weather. I'm actually blessed to have this weather. I went the other, obviously I came from the creek, so I come back in there, but there's this beautiful, beautiful drive that kind of goes through the little range here on the edge of the ocean. Oh, I'll show you, I'll show you, but I've got here now, um, I think I might head back to Windmill Bay. I'm hoping that it hasn't been packed out now. If not, I might find somewhere closer to Windmill Bay. But all along this rock wall here, I'm definitely going to throw a lure this afternoon. Even though it'll be low tide, I'll be able to get right out and maybe get, maybe able to land something because in the high tide, you've definitely got a big chance, unless you've got a popper or something, to get caught up on the rocks. And yeah, I don't want to lose lures again today. So we're going to head through back on the coast bit of this dirt road and I'll show you these drone shots guys because it is a specky specky place tick this one off the list if you can get here So as I said, Cape Palmerston is a good, a good place to bring your full drive. Now, I'm hoping I'm not eating my words here, but 
There has been a couple of, as you would have seen before, that little gnarly rock step there. There's another one right here that I just couldn't go past it and not have a go, to be honest. So it is pretty rutted out. I'm probably going to get a few wheel lifts, but all it takes is good wheel placement. I don't have any lockers yet. Hopefully that comes soon. Um, let's have a go. I'm going to set up the camera. So definitely go on low range for this one. Um, see how we go. <laughs> Hopefully not too hard. few moments later <laughs> you asked for it I'm now bogged <laughs> oh now you're gonna watch a bit of a montage of me digging my car out good times stuck onto the chassis. I have uh, a wedge <laughs> which I should have pulled out sooner but um, I wanted to get it out through digging. So I'm hopefully just going to try and pop myself up. That's all I need just to pop out of the sand because I am bogged to the diff and the chassis rails. <laughs> oh this is a joy as a full driving eh? Do not try that at home. Oh my god. Bit zoomed in. Oh! Righto. Can anyone spot where we went wrong? <laughs> oh. It 100% pays to have your recovery gear. Oh! Too late. I don't need your support. 
as you see, I had a bit of a shower. <laughs> oh, that feels so much better. I was covered in sand. I'm gonna have to clean the car out before I go do anything. But um, this is probably the best campsite, Windmill Bay. If you are looking for a campsite at Cape Palmerston, oh, just because if you've got kids and even in your missus, there's a toilet block right there. I know some people don't like to go poop, pooping in the woods. It's a uh, conversation that, um, we'll put it this way, no, no one really likes to talk about it, but it, it needs to be talked about. So, Windmill Bay, pretty stoked. I don't really have to do much to set up camp. I was gonna throw the awning out, but I don't really want to. <laughs> I don't need to, I really don't need to. I do think I might go grab some uh, firewood. I might make myself a fire. But before that, I'm gonna enjoy this drink and uh, see you in the afternoon. Righto guys, that's the first episode of the year done and dusted. I hope you like the idea of this concept of what I'm trying to do for Mackay, boost this local tourism. So guys, what I need you to do is definitely subscribe to the channel. And not only that, guys, I need you to get get behind these local tourism businesses and spend your money local also. Guys, I've got a lot more car content coming up this year, a few more trips and secret spots to come around Mackay. I'm gonna show you guys everything. Make sure you get a lot more information for a lot more things to do around Mackay so you don't sit there and say there's nothing to do in Mackay, guys, because that's what I'm gonna be doing this year to make sure you guys have got something to do every weekend with yourself, your friends, your family, all of it, guys. And that can't happen unless you just help me out by subscribing to the channel, watching my content, guys, and that would be greatly, greatly appreciated, guys. So, that's it. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for all the camping stuff for Cape Palmerston, guys. So, please, get around it, share it. Get out there and explore this great town. Peace. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> And I ain't talking my pockets, just know we ain't running out the way that we stock it. If I got it, you got it. If I call it, she slide and tell her to mop it. Yeah, I got that shit.